A rare success story from tech earnings season is Duolingo, the language learning software company, saw first quarter bookings surge 55% from a year ago. Adjusted operating profits improved sharply as well. You're seeing the stock up there right now in this broader market sell-off, shares up about 4%. Joining us for more on the company is co-founder and CEO, Luis Van Aan. Luis, good to see you here this morning. Uh, look, we've seen we've been watching a, a real sharp sell-off in the tech space. A lot of doom and gloom uh, right now in the space, but we're not seeing that in your results. Why do you think that's the case? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I think well, we had a really good quarter. Uh, we basically had records in in all of our metrics. I mean, our our, our daily active users increased thirty one percent to twelve and a half million. We got to almost fifty million monthly active users. Um, our bookings increased 55% year over year. Um, and so we had a really, really good quarter. We basically uh, outperformed our own expectations. And because of that, we also increased our guidance. Uh, we, we now expect to be profitable on an adjusted EBITDA basis. Um, and I think the reason for that is because we're, we're a very product focused company. We spend most of our resources just improving our products. And over the last year, we've just made our, our the Duolingo language learning app. Uh, just significantly better. I mean, it, it is more engaging, it is more social, uh, it teaches better, and all of that really turns into just uh, basically high, better financial results. We also saw paid subscribers increase 56% from the prior year as well. When you think about the, the pricing tier, are there other kind of methodologies that you look to unlock to essentially add on more of those acquired customers? Yeah, I mean, so, so you know, we have a we monetize through a freemium model. I mean, the majority of our users are still uh, using Duolingo for free. Um, uh, you know, you can see the graph there. It's a, a six point eight percent of our monthly active users are paying subscribers, and and that number keeps increasing. Uh, you know, it's been increasing about a percentage point every year. Over the last year, it increased that 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 increase accelerated, it increased about two percentage points. And and you know, the idea is we just get better at better at converting our free users into paying subscribers by basically adding more features to the premium to the premium subscription. Uh, and so I, we think that that this will continue. That we'll continue uh, getting getting more and more people to to convert to paying subscribers. Hi, Luis. It's Julie here. Um, I kind of want to ask what it feels like being a startup who came public in 2021, because um, it has not been an easy. The class of 2021, um, it's not been an easy ride for you guys. So how are you sort of thinking about this this current environment here? Um, where we are seeing a big pullback in basically everything, but certainly things that are tech forward. Well, you know, for us, I think it's been pretty great. I mean, our, our, our you know our stock has has fared pretty well considering everything that's been going on in the market. And ultimately, we're very long term focused. I mean, our uh, with Duolingo, we really want to develop the best education in the world and make it universally available. And and we just, you know, we want this to be a hundred year company. Um, and, you know, there's going to be some temporary uh, chop in the market, but th th that's been fine. We really have our, our sights on, on on just making our products better. And and I think that's, you know, because of that is, is uh, our results are pretty good, I think. Uh, and Luis, uh, the learning uh, the learning market has been challenging. I think back to to Chegg's results uh, last week. Not not so good. Different company than yours, but still. Uh, what is it about learning a language that is allowing you to put up these results while someone in in higher education services like a Chegg is not doing that? Oh, I think the biggest difference is just our audience. I mean, we really our audience is extremely wide. I mean, we have uh, users in every single age range from you know. You, from age seven to a hundred, we have users in every single country. So you know things like things like uh, lower um, uh, lower number of people going to college or stuff like that just does not affect us because our, our our user base is so wide. I think the other thing that differentiates us from most uh, education companies is we really really spend most of our efforts on making our products better as opposed to on marketing or or other things like that. And I think in the long term that's just that's just a better strategy. I mean that's that's just our our own philosophy.